And uh, please, Jane Francis, uh, go ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. I, I hope you can hear me. And uh, hello? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. And I also want to apologize beforehand. My connectivity may not be that strong. So the, my presentation is uh, the building capacity of stakeholders on OER and material development in Nigeria, a workshop case study. And uh, I'm going to make this presentation on behalf of my colleagues and friends, Dr. Kek Perry is in co, uh, Mr. Yemi from the National Open University of Nigeria, he's an instructional designer, and uh, Mr. Chukwe Meka is uh, also a, a chief editor from the National Open University of Nigeria. So let me quickly run through the outline. I'm going to look at the background and the rationale of the workshop, the aims of the workshop, workshop plan, the evaluation and summary of the presentations, as well as the group workshop activities and the, some important recommendations. So let me share the background of the workshop. It was sponsored and organized by the Commonwealth of Learning, as well as the Regional Training for Research and this, uh, research, research Institute for Distance and Open Learning. It's a coal institute that is based in, at the National Open University of Nigeria, Abuja. And the focus is on capacity building, building capacity to create assets, reuse, adapt and redistribute OER, which is also a, an OER area of action one. And participants were 42 of them from the Federal University of uh, Oyekiti in Nigeria. And the, the date of this workshop was uh, February, 2020. And uh, I, my humble self was a consultant and I also enlisted my colleagues uh, to help with the presentation because uh, obviously I, I'm not an, an expert in all the areas of uh, the presentation. And also with the advisor, I have the advisors, Kek from Cole and the Prof Professor Patrick from Retrader. And the statement of the work the, was for us to support the Federal University Oye Kitty in the material development workshop, as well as provide insight on OER. And we're also encouraged to institute a pre and post test questionnaire, as well as cover pedagogical issues of open and distance learning, provide overview of OER, uh, and include interactive uh, sessions. Can you still hear me? No problem, Francis. It's going very uh, well. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And the ultimate goal, really, is to, uh, help, you know, assist the federal university in achieving uh, accreditation from the national university commission, because uh, it's a single mode institution that is yearning to go towards a dual mode, providing a, a online education as well as a face-to-face -face learning. So these are the participants. And the workshop plan, they basically we drew up a plan that will assist us in the workshop. And it is about, you know, naturally we started with the, the pre-workshop assessment. We also checked the expectations, what the participants expected from the workshop. We did we had a group formation. And uh, also a, a summary of the presentations were an overview of ODL, then material development in open and distance learning, pedagogical issues in material development, overview of OER, designing and inclusive open educational resources, as well as the search tools in selecting appropriate OER. So the, the pre-workshop evaluation basically was to inform us on how workshop activities may be structured because we had our proposed activity, but we need to also fill the pulse of the participants. So it helped us to understand exactly what they want to learn. 
and most some of them they, 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 from the response they want to know about to improve general knowledge and capacity about open educational resources and how to develop OER modules, learn how OER relates to distance education, okay, and uh, also learn about uh, open and distance learning because uh, this is a new is an institution that want to you know kickstart their the o o open and distance learning institute in order to go dual mode. Then the pre also, the, the second questions we asked for the pre-workshop evaluation was what kind of experience have you had in the area of OER and material development? And the overall range from no experience to some sort of experience. And while specific overhead in the evaluation was, some noted that they have gone through some courses online about OER. They also noted that they have a bit of experience in open licensing, but not trained on how to develop OER, but some have also learned on how to download materials from online for use. So these are some of the expectations. So before we started the workshop, we wanted to check their insight, their level of knowledge on open and distance learning because okay so and there is interesting because the, 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 you know in the definition of odl some felt that odl gives you know the practitioners the students the teachers and everybody the you know improve access to higher education flexibility in learning and what i find most interesting is the, the three groups because we we had to divide them into three groups for be able to be able to manage the group activities the three groups reflected no industrial strike in nigeria for uh, unfortunately the uh, public funded institutions we usually have the the, the the strike action is is almost a common place now as i speak Students, learners are at home because the lecturers have been on strike for the past eight months. Okay, and for couple with the complications of uh, COVID-19. So they are excited that with the open and distance learning, it gives opportunity for students to learn without actually, actually a, a disruption in their studies. And another thing I also, find uh, interesting uh, just from the knowledge uh, is that it improves access and equity in education so it's heartwarming that the participants had a vague idea what open and distance learning is all about so specifically going to the presentations we provided we presented an overview of open and distance learning stressing the importance of sdg4 as well as a simple definition of open and distance learning, which they had actually provided in their expectations. And we also stress the philosophy of ODL, the, the ability to create, provide lifelong learning, uh, and uh, also flexibility. And this is arguably the biggest challenge because our understanding of flexible learning is uh, constantly changing. Another presentation was on materials development in ODL. The instructional designers from the, from the, the, the co-facilitators were able to put the participants through the approaches in material development, the development from scratch, adaptation, adoption, and so on, as well as structures of a course material. Another presentation is on pedagogical issue, issues regarding material development. They looked at the language and style, stressing, really stressing on the use of gender sensitive language in material development. They also look at the content presentation. These are new entrants in open and distance learning and they, 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 their objective was to be able to design, divide the uh, you know, design, develop, and write their materials, and also ultimately open, uh, you uh, make the materials OER. 
So the, the, we had to put them through the content presentation, the use of uh, access device and illustrative design device and so on. Also, we gave them an overview, presented an overview of OER. This was also hands-on with the definitions, the five R's, the open licenses, the types of licensing, which they found a bit complicated, but with group interactions and feedback, we were able to understand it quite a bit. And further recommendations, further discussions bordered on recommendations of OER, starting from the UNESCO, uh, from the, the previous to the more recent one, and the specifically the areas of action and how to select, adapt, and redistribute open educational resources. Uh, another presentation was on material development in ODL, the issues of quality assurance, publishing, and the uh, SDG. For, uh, and, and green publishing. Uh, and uh, they were also made to understand that, uh, you know, there's generally a poor perception regarding open learning and so on, and hence the need to have quality assurance mechanisms and procedures in for a material development. Okay. And this could be achieved through the selection of the right cost team. They adapt, uh, making sure that the house style is uh, up to date and the use of checks, uh, checklists and so on. Uh, when bordering on the green publishing, we highlighted the SDG4, the prayers of SDG4, which is, which is a protection of life and land. And they noted that the green publishing recommends the adoption of best available techniques and best environmental uh, practices taking into account the complete life cycle of a product from design to production, distribution, use, reuse, and end of life. Then we quickly run through the key issues in reusing, redesigning, and repurposing existing OER, which was uh, relevant, accuracy, production quality, accessibility, interactivity, licensing, and so on. Then, uh, one of uh, the, the instru uh, instructional designer uh, also presented uh, a, an overview of some of the tools, online tools that participants could utilize in, you know, searching for uh, open uh, OER documents. So at the end of the hey, workshop, we okay. Yeah. Can you go go to? Can the you end? hear me? Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay, my time is up. Now you can uh, finish this slide, please. Okay, we checked the unfinished businesses and uh, they also confirmed that we were able to, to meet most of the expectations. And then we are, this is a, a part of the post workshop uh, assessment where they, where they, they extend the workshop achieve its program objective, which was mostly uh, indicated mostly. And they also, all categories were deemed useful, demonstrating a lot of growth in, in the workshop. And, uh, and how often would you want this workshop? The more, the, uh, the, that more workshops are needed, that's from the respond, uh, respondent, but often does not happen. And this is about building political will and uh, changing the culture of the university and uh, the, the vice chancellor of the university, the federal university was well positioned with an active, uh, was well positioned to embrace this. In, and, and this is also, could also be exacerbated by COVID-19. Then we had recommendations, building political will, sustaining practice, achieving results, that are also recognized and rewarded in some form. Sharing, searching, never being finished, not satisfied. Cost Jane Francis, is an ongoing process. Yeah. yeah, Jane Francis, we have a question. Thank you, thank you. Uh, okay, okay, I'm done, all right. Jane Francis, the, what are the next steps? How do you keep building on all this great work? What, what are you going to do next? Hello? Hello, Jane Francis. Uh, one of the questions yes. is, are the next steps 
uh, in this approach? How do you keep building on all this great work? Okay, yeah. This workshop is, is actually a case study from the, the, work, the, 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 uh, the workshop we had with the university and it was sponsored, uh, coordinated by Cole and the Retreader. This is actually a, the, a fourth workshop from Retreader and the, the, where the participants, Retreader usually through the uh, Commonwealth of Learning through Retreader train, provide a, training in open educational resources as, and, as well as uh, ODL to universities, okay? So okay. Uh, and the okay. next step is we, we had a follow-up because this uh, training took place in February, but we had mm -hmm. follow-up with uh, uh, online meetings because at the end of the day, the participants were actually encouraged to develop their materials, which is ongoing, and there oh, is great. periodic follow up on the on the activity. So far, it's ongoing actually, and okay. they are ultimately they want to get uh, uh, accreditation for the distance learning institute. Okay, well, Jane Francis, thank you very much for this great presentation. Uh, stop recording, please. Um, yeah.